the return of fireballs, the return of the Jumja sticks, and Power Rangers visit the set of Deep Space Nine. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with your stars, Sirach Lofton and Aaron Eisenberg. My name is Ryan T. Husk. Aaron, you look like you didn't quite agree with the uh, Power, Ra- Power Rangers. No, I, I was just uh, just listening. Power Rangers. Explain the Power Rangers reference. Happy to. Ah. There they are. <laughs> what do you think? I think that kid, <laughs> that kid keeps bullying Come me. Come on. Girl in pink. Power Girl Rangers pink. right there. She's a bully. She's a bully. Not the power. <laughs> that's why I wasn't. What's, that's why I wasn't in this episode. Was because of that girl. I'm just she have Klingon. What is that? Hmm. It, it looks. So. Hello. There you are. We see you. So, for those of you, you got me. Yeah, we got you. For those of you uh, listening in, um, they can't see the video. We just got a picture of Sorok and four other children. And there's the uh, Sorok's the purple ranger. We got the red ranger. Looks like the gold ranger, pink ranger, and green ranger. And they visited the set, and Sorok was their leader. Yeah, but that little girl, (laughs) that little girl in the pink, she's a bully. And the the shortest one on the far left, next to to right of Sorok, that's her cohort. I'm telling you. that's why I wasn't in this episode. I, I had to stay home. It was so hard to go to school. You could read their nonverbal, <laughs> or you just, or just Nog remembers them. Yeah, the kid in green was was pretty nice. He, you know, he was all right. But but the other two, those two girls, terrors. I'm telling you, they're bullies, bullies. You know, just saying. So today uh, we're reviewing in the hands of the prophets directed by David Livingston. It is the final episode of season one. And what do you think? Did they uh, finish off with a bang or what? I don't know if I'd say a bang. Mm. Uh, I I, I liked it, though. I did like the episode. I don't know if I I would say it was a bang. What about you, Sirach? Well, I liked the episode. I mean, it was okay. It was – there was – there's a few things that I liked about it. I liked that Cisco had a, a featured prominent role in this episode. I got more so. Um, I was looking for you in this episode. I thought you'd be <laughs> in it. It just, it just felt natural that you'd be in this episode. Right? Um, yeah, like yeah, he just, just called in sick for the whole week or something. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I they agree. dropped the ball on him because they, they established the school with the two of us. So, the, right. you know – I don't see you doing school without us in there. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, or without explaining why you wouldn't be there. Uh-huh. Well, you exactly. know, and, and beyond just the fact that uh, Nog was in the school and a lot of this took place in the school, but on top of that, I think they missed a really interesting B or C plot in that how does Nog react to what's going on? Does he say, hey, I don't want to hear about all this stuff? Uh, you know, about the profit stuff? Or does he say, wow, that's really interesting. You know, that's kind of like our rules of acquisition or what, you know, what was his perspective on that? Yeah, he would have said, hey, well, if we're going to talk about spirituality, then we better start talking about the rules of acquisition. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I I like that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I'm joking aside. Yeah. No, I also like him saying, I learned to read for this. Yeah. <laughs> for, for this silliness. He, yeah. And, and in a way, in a way, he could have been um, uh, taking the side that the Federation takes in a way, right? That, hey, I don't want to hear about the spirituality. There's, this is a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And then maybe Keiko and, 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 or you are going, hey, because of the conversation you had with your father, are saying, hey, we've got to kind of find a middle ground here. And then maybe Jake, maybe Nog, since you're his best friend, or offers a rule of acquisition that almost throws in an idea of how you find the middle ground. But, but with that said, that takes screen time away from the regulars. And Nog is, is literally just a recurring character. So all those ideas are probably too much for this episode. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, they're great ideas, but, but I'm not a regular. Nog's not. I myself am not a regular on the show. Nog's not a regular character. But he should have at least been in the classroom. And maybe he even made a joke. Oh, great! Now I got to go work in my 
uncle's bar because there's no school, you know, right. school is better, you know, and, and he should have been there with the kids with you, you know, um, and, and it didn't even have to be anything more than that, but then they would have had to pay me. And, you know, I was probably commanding about the same as Avery at that time. I'm pretty sure. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was a big thing for the first season. I had to come down a little bit in the second season, but the first season I, I, I was very demanding. I saw you and Ted Danson were actually tied for first place at that moment. Yeah, Ted and I would have lunch at the um, at the commissary, you know, on on Paramount at times and talk about this. He gave me a lot of pointers how to negotiate negotiate contracts. Yeah, with Rick and I would tell him more rules of acquisition, which would help him in turn. Uh, yeah, so we, had a, we had a tight relationship. <laughs> Although tangent tangent, years before I auditioned at Paramount for Ted Danson's TV show, Down Home. It didn't last very long. Mm. But uh, I was between me and this guy from New York. The guy from New York got it. Ah, it was my first time going to you network, wish. as they call it. Are you and guys watching uh, The Good Place? Have you seen any of that starring Ted Danson? No, no I haven't. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a resounding, <laughs> quiet no. <laughs> and we forgot to give a, a little... Uh, a little plug for our, our good buddy, J.J. Lendl. So we should do that now before we continue to talk about Absolutely. the hands of the prophets. Um, so we want to give a little shout out to our artist who did the artwork for our show, J.J. Lendl. You can find him at www.jjlendl.com. That's www.jjlendl.com. I'm looking for my artwork. I always have it here. Oh, here it is. Here's a piece of it here. We also have a lot of that stuff online. We have mugs and T-shirts and, and socks. Uh, you could literally have Ciroc on one leg and me on the other. Actually, I don't know if we have that. But uh, Ryan can tell us a little bit about our teespring.com page if you would like, Ryan. Actually, you absolutely could do that. You would have to buy a pair of Aaron socks and a pair of Ciroc socks, but then you could mix and match like Punky Brewster two days in a row, there you go. Uh, teespring.com slash the seventh rule. Just go to teespring.com or check out in the description box below and you will see the link. You can check out all of our online stuff. And Sirach and I would like to uh, thank JJ Lendl for providing us with a weekly 45 second beverage break while Aaron talks. So thank you. <laughs> so throw me in. I felt like I'm, I'm sitting under a bus right now and I, I don't know how the bus. No, me. no bus. I, I, I'm not driving this bus. <laughs> but uh, you know what I do what I did like about this in the hands of the puppet was the fact that they used O'Brien's uh assistant and really uh played her in throughout the season. She she wasn't like a one and right. done character and that's one I of the I barely remember her though. No, she's been yep, she's been she consistently has. in the background. Yep. And and then awesome. she's had some scenes and she's had uh, Yep. That's exactly it. I'm going to look her up right now just so that we know exactly how we many. We missed what you said there, Ciroc. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that I discovery We were criticizing Discovery for uh, being quick with their characters. Yeah. Well, okay, so here she is. She was in two episodes. She was in this one and she was in last week's, which was duet. So sometimes what they do is they know they know that she's going to be like some prominent figure in the next episode. So they incorporate a new character and like kind of like what they did with Eddington, but they did that for a few episodes. It's really good that they planted those seeds, though, because then otherwise if somebody's just introduced one episode – it's it's obvious that they're the ones that did, you know, whatever it is that they're trying to do. So there was another assistant, though, for O'Brien in previous episodes. And I wonder if they were working it back then, but something didn't work out with that actress for the last two ones. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm, I'm with Ciroc. He's had this Bajoran assistant who's been uh, had lines, you know, interaction with him, not just working. And um, and but it must have been a different actress in the previous episodes. Yeah, or maybe, yeah, maybe that one got scheduling conflicts or whatever, so they brought in a new person. Um, but yeah, they kept it consistent. At least he had that, that type of assistant, you know, which yeah. 
they were hoping maybe we don't even realize that it's a different person, very similar. Yeah. Um, this, this, we, we, we go back to asking questions. This show definitely asks questions. At least it ended on a, on a good philosophical, uh, dilemma and, and starts, uh, laying the groundwork for the future of our show and, and in the spirituality of the Bajorans versus the non-religious ideology of, of, of Starfleet. Um, and, um, I, I do think they kind of missed a little bit of an opportunity to also put, the ideology of the Ferengi in there, uh, we were kind of talking about it, but there, there just isn't enough room, I would I would think, in a 45-minute episode to truly do that. Um, it would have been interesting to hear, you know, Nog, even if he shouted, well, hey, let's talk about the rules of acquisition if we're going to talk about that, mm-hmm. if Nog was in the episode. But-